If you have four days of binge eating, where on just one of those days, as an example, you have a Burger King three times, along with a ton of other junk food, and all that happens just because you were overly restricting your calories and in too big a deficit, is that a sensible way of dieting? No, it's ridiculous, it's not healthy, it's not productive, and it's certainly not to be recommended. But, burgers. Welcome to another video update covering my ongoing fat loss journey. If you're new here, I began almost seven weeks ago a calorie restricted diet designed to last for eight weeks, which will bring me up to my wedding in just over a week's time. Now, since I started this, I've also signed up for a 100 kilometer ultra marathon in three weeks time. So I might continue the dieting slightly past my wedding before bringing the calories back up to allow me to run for at least 12 hours without passing out. Now, in my last video, I described how week five ended with a four day, 40,000 calorie blowout. I woke up Friday. The room looked like it was just missing Mike Tyson's tiger. Empty packets of food everywhere. And it went downhill from there. Remarkably, by the end of week six, when I made that video, I'd sort of recovered from that. And now approaching the end of week seven, very much back on it. And what I intended to discuss today, as well as doing the daily update photos that I've been keeping, was how I have structured my day, my exercise, my eating to remain focused on the goal. And I will do that. But I also want to address all of the comments that that video got about those four days, because there's a lot of very useful, insightful information on why people binge eat, why diets fail, why eating too little causes a yo-yo effect. And it's an issue that has in the past caused me to weigh over 350 pounds. But now I have, I think, got control of it, sort of. Let's do the current situation first. Right now, I feel amazing, better than I have done in ages. In fact, I may feel better than ever. During the day, my hunger rolls gently from mildly hungry, which I no longer confuse with, I must eat now, to satisfied, and then back again. And I finally nailed adding my food in the right portion size and the right time of day, so that I eat at the bottom of those dips, but doing so doesn't then take me beyond satisfied into stuffed. And that balance is probably 80% the right amount of food, 20% the right time of day. I spent from the age of 10 till now, so 37 years, telling myself I'm big, so I need to eat huge portions of food. No, I don't. Portion control has been game changing. In fact, Jenna pointed out just the other day that since we both agreed that our evening meal should be a set bowl of food each, with leftovers left in the kitchen to put away for the next day, and not what we used to do, which was just put a giant dish of food out so we could just dip into second or third servings, our food bill was dropped as quick as our body fat. So win-win. And I've said this before, when I feed the dogs, I give them a bowl of food. If I gave them all their food and left them to intuitively eat what they like, I'd have fat dogs. It's funny, you have millions of people all over the world giving their pets two, three fixed size meals a day and then eating what they like for themselves. Their fat, their pet isn't. Do the maths. Right, uh, what else? I feel light and I feel lean, but still strong. Basically all very good. Having said that, I can tell that I'm in a calorie deficit. I've been aiming to eat at most two and a half thousand calories a day, which is very basically four 500 calorie meals. So that's breakfast that I eat late as part of intermittent fasting, lunch, supper, evening meal, with then 500 spare for snacks. Two and a half thousand calories is my expenditure for a rest day, but I've been getting in a thousand calories a day roughly of cardio, simply by alternating running and riding on the bike in here. And that's worked. Garmin, for how accurate that is, shows around three and a half thousand calories a day burnt. I know I'm not eating two and a half thousand calories, so a nice shortfall. And as I say, I can feel the shortfall. When I run, for example, I get tired sooner than normal. And when I'm on the bike, I can't sprint at the end of a race like I usually can. But because I know why that's the case, the energy shortfall, I'm okay with it. It's a bit like when I go for a run and I sometimes wear a weighted vest. And obviously when I do, my time, my pace is all reduced. But I know why, and I know that it is long-term productive to be doing that. That's how I feel right now. I'm not getting off the bike in here disappointed with my performance. I'm feeling happy with it, given its purpose right now, which is to hit that expenditure target. It is not to win the race. There is a competitive part of me that is mildly annoyed when someone sees me running slowly or beats me on Zwift in here, and I have no way of telling them, hey, just ignore this. I'm really hungry right now, come back in a couple of weeks. But that is a small price to pay. 
actually I raced on Zwift Tuesday night, two short races back to back, and I got two second places. So it's not like I am getting completely crushed out there. And in the gym, I'm a few kilos off lifting what I used to do on really heavy days, and my workouts really now go beyond 50 minutes, but I'm not staggering around the place like a zombie. I can still push it hard when I'm there. So the plan is to keep this going until next weekend, get our 2021 delayed wedding done and dusted, which is actually more party than wedding because officially we got married quietly and privately at the end of last year. We just sort of ran off and did it because no one tells me what year I can and can't get married in. Contract taste, contact tasting, testing, tracing, forgive me, contract, contract, contract. And then I'll hold those calories another week or so then ramp them back up in preparation for the ultra. Regarding the ultra training, very, very little really. I'm doing a few long runs a week and each weekend something really big to get used to hours of effort. For example, this Saturday, the plan is a marathon run, straight back in here, jump on the bike, climb out to Zwift. It's probably grossly insufficient training for a hundred kilometer run, but it is what it is. No one's ever died running an ultra marathon they weren't prepared for. Actually, the, they probably have. People probably have died doing exactly that. I will try not to die. Right, binge eating. Now the comments on the last video ranged from, you cut calories too hard, that's why your body overreacted by causing you to desire stupid amounts of food to compensate for pending starvation. Through to a couple of messages I got sent saying that I was an idiot, and it was a dangerous way of eating, and I was gonna just yo-yo back to 350 pounds. Basically, I was a moron, I didn't know what I was doing. To be fair, every comment had an element of truth to it. I did cut back too hard, combined with too much energy expenditure. I was running and riding every single day, and that did kick my cravings to a point where they just take over. And that four days is a negative period for fat loss, obviously, and does set things back, but, and here's the but, it is not yo-yo dieting or boomerang dieting as someone called it. The binge, my binge, does not negate everything before it. I am today, after the binge, ahead of where I was weeks ago. I'm not back at the start. That's not a yo-yo. You buy a yo-yo that doesn't return to the start, get your money back. Someone sells you a boomerang that doesn't go full circle, you've been sold a stick. Now that is not to say that yo-yo dieting is not a thing. It's a real thing for millions of people. In fact, probably most people try to drop weight, experience it to some extent. It was the case for me in the past. Up to around 10 years ago, I'd often go from 350 pounds to 300 pounds, back to 350 pounds. And binge eating would have been the instigator every time for that bounce back to where I'd started. Even recently, although I've never gone quite that far back, I have yo-yoed between being in shape and being out of shape. So it's a real thing and there's lots of great advice about learning to eat with consistency, about developing a better relationship with food that people can use to tackle that. One of the comments was from someone saying they had learned to regard junk food as not real food. They just took it off their mental menu as an option. All that is good stuff. But I'm nearly 50 and I will never take a burger or three burgers off my menu. It just isn't gonna happen. I will never be able to avoid those backward steps. For the rest of my life, I will encounter multiple day binges. And it's easy for people with no history, so no personal understanding of that mentality to dismiss that as lacking willpower or weakness. I don't care. Now and then, somebody with a serious addiction issue will chat with me and I will realize that my cravings are on a par with theirs in many ways. So I realize I'm not mainstream. I don't expect or need the majority to know what it feels like to be unable, unable to resist something. Doesn't matter. Here's my realization. I am not someone that rolls along with calm consistency. As a kid, I did go-karting properly. I had an instructor. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. And he would tell me, be on the gas or be on the brake. There's no rolling. Maybe that just stuck with me too well. I'm not the tortoise, I'm the hare. Sprint like mad, have a sleep. While the tortoise just plods along sensibly. Now in the story, the tortoise wins by passing the sleeping hare. But it's just a story. We all know in real life, the hare sets an alarm, he'd wake up and he would crush the tortoise. I don't wanna be a tortoise. Bottom line, I get bored very easily and I wanna be accelerating and enjoying the buzz from that, even if it's a bit excessive, or slamming on the brakes and enjoying the implications of barreling into a corner slightly out of control. Actually, do you know, it was funny. I was with a client a couple of days ago for my real job, and we were looking at stock market returns for the last couple of years and the effect that COVID had had on them. He'd invested just before the pandemic, and so he had lost a couple of hundred thousand pounds pretty much overnight. 
At the time, we'd agreed that one of two things were probably going to happen. Either COVID would be a worst case scenario, wipe out half the world, and we'd all be living like Mad Max by Christmas. In which case I'd said to him, is your portfolio really the biggest of your worries? Or as it has done many times in the past, things would sort themselves out and the markets would move onwards and upwards. He agreed that was far more likely and also he drives a Tesla. So I did explain to him that he was screwed in an apocalypse because really petrol is the only fuel you can scavenge. And today he has more money than before the pandemic. Bailing out last April, having taken the hit and just sulking in cash would have been disastrous. And it showed me having been telling people that basic stick with the plan message for the last 25 years about the tech bubble bursting, about banking crisis, Brexit, COVID, the list goes on, that I need to listen to my own advice. Historically, my weight loss or fitness or health journey, whatever, has always hit a downturn. And instead of telling myself that that is just an annoying, but in the bigger picture, irrelevant step in an otherwise upwards trend, I always cash in. I come off the binge and just give up. That last picture, that was from an October a few years ago. I came back from that holiday, treated myself to a giant Toblerone at the airport as a reward for getting in beach ready shape. And that Toblerone then began a three day avalanche of food. But by day four it was over, but I'd given up investing in myself. So October became November, became December. Suddenly it is Christmas and I'm two months into eating like I just don't care anymore. By January I was out of shape. It took me until summer to be back to where I'd been on the beach. So having finally seen that with some clarity, I nailed it two weeks ago. I came off that bad four days, stayed invested, back to normal within a week. Today, ahead of where I was, onwards and upwards. So all the comments about why it happened, about how to stop it happening again, I get all of those completely. I understand the theory of excessive calorie deprivation, just like I understand telling people how to avoid the obvious pitfalls when investing their money. But also I understand that sometimes shit just happens and it's staying on course after that, which makes the real difference. So that's what I'm going to focus on and continue to focus on moving, moving forward, forward after getting hit hard. That's how winning is done, which is starting to turn into the Rocky quote, but that's an appropriate thing because while Rocky trains hard to win every round, cause you'd be daft not to, he wins his fights from his ability to return strong from the rounds he loses. Now with simply not losing a round, and never needing to come back from the brink be simpler, yes. But that's also a boring, lousy movie, for me at least. If watching a film about mundane consistency floats your boat, that is cool too. Two last things on a serious point. I understand that my binge eating is on the ladder of disordered eating. It is not optimal to eat the way I do when it goes bad. I'm not saying 10,000 calorie binges are a good idea. I'm just saying that I've achieved more from learning to recover from them than I ever got from trying to avoid them. If you can avoid them, great. If you never have them, even better. If you think they sound like fun, you want to try them, don't. They aren't as good as they sound. I mean, they are as good as they sound, obviously, but don't. I'm not saying that what I do is good or is to be suggested for others. And while I am on the ladder of disordered eating, I'm low down. I realize it goes very, very high. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist or a vet. I'm quoting Rocky for God's sakes. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. If you have an issue with the way you eat and it is harming your health, if you're on that ladder above me, stop watching this and talk to an expert. I have dealt with yo-yo eating in a way that works for me. You need to deal with it your way. Oh, and now and then people tell me that my health will suffer and I'm no example of fitness if I succumb to these dips, these urges to overconsume. Whatever. I spent years as a giant obese lump that would have died if I ran 100 seconds, let alone 100 kilometers. Where were you then with your wonderful feedback on my life choices? If I am the best place for anybody to target, you're the opposite of health and fitness accusations, then you are not looking for targets hard enough. Okay, update photos coming. Like and subscribe. Coming very soon, that marathon run into the Alp climb on here. For now, I'm out of here.